like to do re we do a lot of research i guess on each guest and it just yeah i've never i've never <laughs> when i, I thought i was like I didn't know I had that much information out. So <laughs> <laughs> you're interesting. <laughs> I didn't know I had that much stuff out online. So I was like, whoa. Yeah, you I've never you, like, done that. Yeah. You <laughs>
um, that's when it kind of like I got rid of it. But I wasn't a flipping heavy drinker like you, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Just as a youngster. <laughs> as, as, uh, that's pretty young. <laughs> I know, it's terrible there. Like, and then, then you, know, you know, you think you, you'd be doing the right thing and like being, I, I guess I also, I suppose I also like started drinking at a young age also because I had no self-confidence, you know. Mm. And I, when you have a few drinks, suddenly you like, you know, invincible so i guess that was maybe part of it i hadn't really thought of it until talking about it now you know wow but yeah. uh, that probably did have something to do with it as well but um most certainly our guest this week um sheena she um has uh, a really really great podcast called the tower of self self-confidence and uh, and she knows a lot about self-confidence hey yeah she does for sure i mean she is a girl that actually um, has suffered with uh, low self-confidence and, and esteem um, growing up as a young Asian uh, woman with, you know, a lot of pressures on her from society and her not necessarily fitting in with, with all of those things that she's meant to be doing, you know, so it kind of had an impact on her and... Um, yeah, so so through her journey, basically, she's had to build up her self confidence, you know. And and it is interesting that she she runs a podcast about it, but is not necessarily um, the most confident person um, in the world. But she has really learned a lot and really uh, grown a lot, and um, it's really really interesting just understanding her journey and where she's coming from, isn't it? for sure I, th I think it's a real example of someone that's really like in doing has learned you know and and built up her own self-confidence uh almost as like a a decision that she makes every day to to work on it and and in sort of doing so those small little incremental changes each day her her confidence actually grows and grows and grows into um, you know, uh, let's say a, gen a general state of confidence. However, she she also mentions that she still has those days where she really just doesn't have the, any self confidence. And you know, that's also what we really enjoyed about chatting to her. She's she's really open and honest about that. And that's and that's the, probably the reality for most people is that you're going to have amazing days and other days not. But then you just have to keep um, remem reminding yourself that what really is important, you know, and she's had, you know, she's had to deal with a lot of social norms and societal norms, uh, like, uh, you know, pressures to get married, etc. And I'm sure that influenced her journey as well. Hey, yeah, for sure. I mean, she really gets into it and tells us a lot about like the Asian culture and the pressures that are that are existing there, you know, like girls that uh, should be seen to have paler skin you know because they want to mm. emulate the american culture um it's crazy and then you know there's a pressure to get married at a at a young age and if you don't get married then you you're sort of seen as like not really worth much it's just like it, it's it kind of makes your mind boggle a little bit you know and yeah and it was it was just really interesting listening to her talk about these things and you know, and that's the one of the reasons she started her podcast, isn't it? So that she could start speaking to people that are, sorry, speaking to women that are in similar situations um, and have overcome them uh, so that there sure. is a good representation, <laughs> representation, <laughs> represent, <laughs> uh, what's the word? Representation. Representation. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> um of um asian women that that young younger asian girls can look up to yeah, yeah. And, and i mean we, one thing that we got um exposed to during the chat is that like you said earlier is how prevalent it is amongst um the asian women specifically because uh you know sheena's had uh, over 500 guests now and each one of them is a an, an asian female um and all discussing how they deal with self-confidence issues and how they run powerful businesses and, and you name it, um, all sorts of human stories from um, all these amazing ladies. Um, and it's really, it's really great. And, and, but it's a prime example, you know, she's about, you know, her, her 
her podcast is all about self confidence, and she she discusses this with a very specific niche. But there's still people out there that say, well, why don't you know? Why don't you have men? Why don't you have other women? And you know, it's so great that she's just stuck to her guns and said, well, look, I understand this demographic. This is who I am, and I can totally relate to this. And it's a real prevalent thing in the Asian culture to have those kind of social pressure, pressure, pressures. So I think it's a really cool and 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 important uh, sort of um, task that she's got or given herself to do is to empower these ladies and to show that or be an example for youngsters to see um, what it's what it's you know what is possible for them and and what other women are doing so that they can follow her. Yeah, absolutely. And you know what? Um just listening to her speak like she came across so confident and like so Mm. wise i thought i was like wow i could sit here and listen to her talk for ages because she's speaking with a lot of experience and um, that's where a lot of the value comes for uh, the girls that follow her and then listen to her and i i really enjoyed the podcast she's a super interesting girl um, with a really great uh, message to share and I think now is a great time to listen to what uh, Sheena Yap Chan um, has to say and uh, what it's like for her to be ridiculously human. Cool stuff. Well, good morning there, Sheena Yap Chan. Uh, how's it going? I initially thought it was going to be evening for you in Canada, but you surprised us and popped up in the Philippines <laughs> <laughs> at 5 a.m. in the morning. So, uh, you know, thank you so much for joining us so early on in the morning. <laughs> no worries. Thanks for having me. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Yeah. And sorry for surprising you with a, a video version of the podcast as well. <laughs> um, we know five o'clock in the morning is not, uh, you know, not sort of necessarily the nicest time to be seen on camera but we really appreciate it (laughs) (laughs) Uh, so so yeah like um you know you i think you've recently obviously landed in the philippines because um you know i think when we were originally chatting you were in canada have you just like got there in the last week or so oh no i've been here for quite a while it's been about a little over a month Oh, have you? Okay, cool. Okay, cool. Um, so, so yeah. So, what, what are you? What are you doing out there? I guess you're back home visiting family and friends and stuff. Yeah. Spending time with my family, my grandmas especially. So, yeah. <laughs> That's cool. And and which sort of part of uh, the Philippines are you in? Uh, it's uh, Cebu City. So it's just like an island, one of the islands here. <laughs> oh, awesome. That's cool. Um, and yeah. And uh, yeah, what what has it been like there? Have you have you still been doing a little bit of work, or are you uh, are you taking a bit of a break, or uh, what does a typical day look like for you at the moment? Uh, just right now, taking a mini break, so I'm really just uh, focusing on my family and friends here. Ah, that's cool. So, so yeah, so just um, to give the sort of chat a little bit of um, context. Um, I think we, I, I like found out about you uh, through one of the podcast groups on uh, Facebook. It, it might have been the podcast movement and um, you had just been celebrating like a really big success uh, in terms of your mm. podcast because you, you host your own podcast and you'd just reached a really big milestone of 600,000 downloads, which is truly remarkable. So mm. congratulations for that. I mean, um, those numbers are quite astounding. We, we really chuffed for you. And yeah, yeah. So, so that, that's basically how we sort of, um, you know, got in touch with you and, and then, you know, started doing a little bit of research and we're like, wow, we've got to, we've got to, you know, speak to this lady. She's, she seems really interesting. You've got a cool story and you, you're doing something really, really awesome as well, you know? Um, so, so yeah, just to kind of like take us back like you know to you know the beginning what it was like for you you know our listeners love to hear people's stories where they come from who makes them um so yeah if you just want to take us back maybe like in time a little bit you know like sheena a uh, young sheena yeah um you know what uh, what was life like for you growing up and where did it start to uh, begin and i guess life for me was you know i mean it was it's I guess different. I mean, we were, I was born in the Philippines and my parents migrated to Canada when I was seven. 
Um, so, you know, being in a totally different country was all new for me. Couldn't really speak English, you know, had to go through um, ESL classes. And, um, you know, I was just really taught to just, you know, go to school, get a good education, get a good job and, you know, have that financial security. Um, so, you know, and, it, and it's been kind of crazy because we've been going back, uh, living here in the Philippines and there uh, in Canada. So we kind of went back and forth, kind of to pick up our lives and go move halfway across the world and did it again the other way. So, um, <laughs> moving <laughs> yeah <laughs> but I mean it, it's helped us learn to adapt to different environments and um, I mean I, I had you know an office job worked there for 12 years um, I always knew I always knew it was not something I wanted to do I mean I don't know if any of your listeners have ever just like sat in their cubicle or desk and wondered if that was something they could see themselves or picture themselves do until they were like 60 or 65 <laughs> so um, it wasn't for me, and um, back then I was really insecure of who I was. I never, I was really not that kind to myself. My confidence isn't the best. I mean, I still work on it every single day, but before it was just like, you know, I was always judging myself. I was putting myself down. I, I always thought I was never good enough for anybody. I was really afraid of what other people might think of me. Um, you know, I just, I was so, um, you know, I always sought that validation from everyone and it can be draining and you know um, it took I guess you know my aunt um, passed away almost seven years ago and helped me realize that life is so short like we never know what's gonna happen like you know we could die at any given moment we never know what's gonna happen but um, we, we're here for a reason right we're here on earth to create the life that we want live a you know that quality lifestyle that we want and it's not like I you know I I like jumped on it right I mean it took me a while to like do that stuff because it's not typical especially mm -hmm. as an Asian girl you know we're all just taught to live one certain way of life you know because it's all we know and you know it's all they think that works right yeah um yeah. live in different times and that same route will not always work right things mm -hmm. happen you know there's different situations different environments now I mean it may have worked 50 years ago but now it's totally different right um, as women we have more choices out there we we have more opportunities and and we have a voice right as as you know as Asian, you know women of like asian descent they're always viewed by society as someone who's quiet and obedient and will just never rock the boat and i think it's time especially now to realize that there's you know strong representation of asian women and there's women out there who are doing things their way, creating their own rules, creating their own lifestyle. And that's one of the reasons why I created, you know, my podcast, because I just felt like there was no support system, especially for Asian women. It, I couldn't find it. So if, if it's like, if I couldn't find it, I had to create it. And so for me, if I can help one person, um, I've done my job because sometimes all it takes is to help that one person and that mm. you never know what kind of difference that person can make in the world. So yeah, a little bit about me. Yeah, and, and, you that's know, awesome. I've, I've, that's a really, really empowering story. I mean, you know, you, you, it's a big move uh, coming over, you know, f to a very different sort of culture, language, everything. And I presume, you know, that, that move must have impacted your self-confidence with, you know, the language and all that as well. But, I mean, you've come a long way. But I, when you were talking about, you know, getting into that track that people sort of assume that you'll go on, I'm sure um, as an Asian woman and many Asian women out there would, would feel that. But even just generally, I think people often get led down this path of thinking this is the way, this is the status quo, this is the way it should be. And we just kind of get into that rut, you know, and I think your message is, is also more universal as well, like just to in general, you know, which is, is really cool and, 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 you know, very grateful for people like yourself who bring that message. But you know, bringing it back to to moving over from from the Philippines, uh, how, what what was your parents' um, sort of idea with moving there, and what what drove them to, or what prompted them to to move over there? To the Philippines or to Canada? To from Canada. from yeah. to Canada. Okay, <laughs> um, so my parents always just wanted a better life for us. Um, you know, when it comes to quality of life, they always wanted us to get better education. Um, you know, live diff a different way here. You know, we 
do get a little bit more pampered versus there. So it's like we had to learn to be more independent and just kind of like figure out what we want to do. Um, and that was one of the reasons, just that quality of life. Uh, that was the main reason why my parents decided to come to come to Canada. And, you know, we were there for about a good six, seven years until um, my grandfather at the time wasn't doing well. So that was the reason why we came back here to the Philippines and you know, kind of settled in for a couple of years. And uh, when my grandfather passed away, my dad just knew that, you know, his, his life was there in Canada. It's, it's where he wanted to be. And, you know, we just all moved back. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's not, easy, you know, like you just, you're settled in and then you got to pick up and move somewhere else again. And it's not like wow. it's down the street. It's halfway across the world. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, well, so, so can you just tell us a little bit about like growing up in the Philippines? I mean, Craig and I have, both traveled a fair bit and then we've done a lot of um, Asia ourselves and just love it. But I mean, I don't think you've been to Philippines, Craig. I definitely haven't. But what is it like growing up? Um, you know, what, is it a big city that you're from? Is it a small village? Uh, what was it like? I mean, we, we live in the city. I mean, you know, the, the city I live in, you know, we get the best of both worlds. We have the city life, we have the beach life and, mm. and beaches here are amazing. Um, but if you've never been to the Philippines, uh, you know, it might be quite a culture shock. You know, there's so much poverty here. Um, you know, you see it down the street. As you're driving down, there's kids begging for money or, you know, it's it's totally different um, from like being in the States or Canada. And, you know, um, growing up here it was like, you know, there's still that standard of beauty, whether, you know, it's from your family, from from society. It's like, in the Philippines, if you're not fair skin, you're not considered beautiful. So there's like every you know, skin whitening cream or potion or whatever <laughs> under the sun. And it's, it's, it's crazy what, how it can affect women here. I mean, when you're driving down the highway and there's like huge billboards of it saying like, you know, to be beautiful, you must have fair skin. Like it can really hurt a woman's confidence and especially with physical features, you know, it's huge. You know, we see them in magazines, billboards, now social media. Um, it's like, you know, that, that what a woman should look like, not realizing like as women, as human beings in general, we all come in different shapes and forms and we have to learn to accept ourselves and learn, realize we are beautiful. Um, so, I mean, that, that was what it was like growing up here and just, you know, having expectations from your family. Um, you know, it's like, you have to go to a good school. You have to go get that good job. You have to get married now. I mean, if if mm. you're like, you know, 25 and over and not married, it's like, you know, you're considered like a spinster. Wow. <laughs> and <laughs> crazy, you know, like you might have like a really good job or a really good position, but it's like, you know, you haven't made it unless you got married. So it's like when I come here, it's like, you know, the first thing they ask is when are you going to get married? You know, what do you, wow. what have you? husband yet it's it's crazy <laughs> you know yeah. i mean i laugh it off and and uh you know not really care about it but here it's it's huge it's like if you're not if you're a woman who's single it's like you de you're deemed unsuccessful because wow. you haven't got so yeah so, yeah that's, that's insane yeah. and I, I can't you know it's incredible how society and family and friends put pressure on other people like it's it's so strange that people have such a vested interest in other people's lives isn't it it's just uh, really really weird but um you, you mentioned that it was really sort of more cushy let's say um in in canada compared to the philippines uh, what do you mean by that in the philippines is there like a real culture of like hard work long days or um what, what is the sort of the the, the general uh, vibe oh, actually, that you, you mean oh i had it it was actually the other way around so here you know we have um, like in the Philippines, it was a, a little bit more cushy for us. It's, we have help, right. you know, to things around the house. I understand. Sorry, I misunderstood. Ah. Yeah. Um, you know, we have help around the house and, you know, someone to drive us around versus in right. Canada. We had to do everything ourselves, you know, learn how to, you know, wash the dishes. Like my mom never knew how to cook until she went to Canada. No way. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, because there was, would cook for us, you know. Uh, little things like that. So we had to learn to just do things on our own. And, you know, just, you know, like my mom learning to cook just makes us realize like you can learn something new at any given moment at any age. Like you never, 
let something like your age stop you from learning something new. I mean, now my mom's one of you know the greatest cooks I know, <laughs> and you know she started. She had no other choice but to learn to cook for her family. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think yeah. yeah, moms always seem to be like the best cooks ever, isn't it? So you always like <laughs> hope that you grow up one day to be able to cook like them. That's for sure. <laughs> um, <laughs> but it's interesting what you say about like people being looked after by others and not being able to do stuff because I, I, we're actually both aware, aware of it because we grew up in South Africa and South Africa you have a lot of help too. And I think, I mean, our folks actually made us do stuff, but there were definitely people and I noticed like, when I moved to London, I lived with some South Africans and, you know, I was living with like 30 year old girls that didn't know how to iron their, their shirts and they didn't know how to cook dinner and that either. And I was just like, what, how can you have been so pam pampered your whole life? It just, um, yeah, it's just, I guess it's just one of those things. Like, you know, when you have help, you, you don't need to learn things. And, um, it's, it's probably like a double edged sword. You live an easy life, but then you don't actually learn how to do things too. Mm. yeah yeah so. <laughs> yeah yeah exactly but and and just just to just, just the 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 thing that that fascinates me um what, that you're talking about like um having pale skin why is it like that it's such a like a a, a good thing or nice thing um or or looked upon thing when in for asian women as opposed to dark skin oh so you know, in the Philippines, we're very um, heavily influenced by U.S. culture and Westernized culture. So it's like, you know, they see a white person, you know, they have fair skin and they want to, like, emulate that. So, so you know, it's, it's, it's one of the huge reasons as to why, like, it's, it's so prevalent here. Like, you know, they want to have every whitening, whitening, screen, whitening cream under the sun. Um, it's it's like they want to look like you know American people, and it's funny because in, in Western culture, everyone wants to look like right. they just came from peace. <laughs> want to look yeah. tan, so it's crazy what happens. <laughs> when, um, you know, we want to be like them, but yet they want to be like us. And <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's insane. <laughs> it is crazy. It is totally yeah. crazy. <laughs> And Sheena is is um, I'm I'm presuming that um, at the same token, it's things like weight is also like heavily oh. uh, influenced. From is that is that true? Yeah, I mean, you know, as Asian women, we're met, we're supposed to be all like skinny and small framed. So it's mm. here, it's the same thing. You see every you know like weight loss product under the sun. You know, stars are are you know they they hire them to to promote that that certain thing mm. whether it's a pill or a shake or um you know it, it's really it's really prevalent here as well it's like it, yeah like when do you ever hear about you know asian women being like obese or you know are a little bit yeah. you know bigger right it's not typical so mm. um weight's huge here and it's like if you're not a certain size again you're not deemed beautiful <laughs> wow yeah and and a are people sorry? Are people being influenced by, like, let's say Instagram and what have you from the states, or, or are there sort of internal um, analogous sort of apps and and things like that 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 are like prevalent in uh, in the Philippines that are sort of similar? Well, I mean, you know, there's you know local movie stars here that are huge, and it's mm. like you know, there's, there's like in the Philippines there's just like huge billboards everywhere, right? So I mean, when you're driving by and you see you know, a billboard of this girl who has like the perfect body by standards, it's like, you know, you see that and that affects you, right? Because especially if you're driving by the same road every Monday to Friday to work, it's like, you see that and then you start feeling bad because it's like, I don't look like her. I'm not a size zero. I'm, I don't have that, you know, hourglass figure. I must not be beautiful. Uh, and, and then with social media, it's huge now. These stars here have huge, you know, followings, huge influence. And it's like, you know, they're paid to, you know, promote a certain weight loss product or, you know, a lot of them have these success stories where I've lost 20 pounds, I've lost how many inches. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with losing weight. You know, it's great, you know, health wise, but it can really affect us. It's like if we gain that one pound, we feel bad because it's like, oh, no, 
you know, no one's going to accept me again. Mm. People are going to think they're not going to love me enough or not accept who I am because I gained that one pound or, you know, I'm not as fit as I used to be. So it, it really does pretty much screw with us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. So, so do you, I mean, this is obviously not just the a thing for Asian girls. It's, it's worldwide. But are you saying it's sort of more prevalent in the Asian culture? Um, yeah, I mean, just... You know, we see so much products out there for weight loss, you know. Um, you know, we see so many women, you know, you know, like like the people who influence this country, you see them, are, they're all size zeros. They're all, like, super skinny. Half of them don't probably eat because they need to keep that figure, you know. And they're like, don't eat so much because then you're going to get bigger, you know. Don't wow. go out in the sun because you're going to get too dark, you know. Little <laughs> things like that, they have to keep up with that appearance and it's, it's a shame, right? Because it's like you can't be who you truly are because, you know, you've been told to look a certain way and be a certain way to please, you know, your audience or your fans or your followers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it can get pretty crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for Man, sure. There's a lot of pressure on, pe- on, on people here. It's crazy. Yeah, it's sad. Eh? Like, it just is so sad, how there's that, that, that pressure on people to be a certain mm-hmm. way. So you mentioned that you were pretty, uh, like, sort of, low of confidence and self-esteem growing up was there any particular reason for that do you think was um i think it's just you know how you're brought up you know it's just like you know you just follow what you're told and never like rock the boat never make any noise you know as women um especially women women of asian descent it's like you know like you mentioned before the main goal was to get married and you know just just live your life as a married woman and never Mm. make any noise if we were to do something outside those boundaries, we're considered, you know, crazy and out of control. But it's just like, you know, there's a, a boiling point where you're like, you know, you're fed up with this. Like, you can't do this. You feel trapped in your own own body, right? Because you're you're trying to live up to other people's expectations, and it's not always easy. You know, in fact, it's it's hard. It's tiring. It's draining. And um, you know, like for me, I always thought, you know. I was never good enough because I was single or I wasn't married yet. And it's like, maybe nobody likes me. Maybe no guy wants to marry me. And it, you know, you know, really um, hurt my confidence for the longest time. Mm. And it was like, you know, for a moment, you know, my goal was to find a man and get married because that's all I knew at the time and not realizing like, you know, I don't need to settle. You know, I can go out there and be who I am. And, you know, if I learn to work on myself daily and build my confidence, you know, I can, you know, attract the things that I want in my life and, you know, mm. things like getting married isn't important. I mean, it's not, not, you know, there's a difference with getting married for the right reasons and getting married for the wrong reasons. And, you know, like even in the Philippines, a lot of women get married for the sake of marriage, you know, it's not just in the Philippines in Asia as well, because they've been programmed to get married. <laughs> you know, it's like mm. quit your job because <laughs> you're going to get married. And, and it's a shame, right? Because it's like there's so many things out there than getting married. Not that there's anything wrong with getting married, but like I mentioned, if you're getting married for the wrong reasons, and yeah, you have to think twice. It's like, is this what you really want? Or, you know, is there other things you want in life? You know, we hear so many stories of women who've been through abuse, you know, husbands who cheat on them because it's like, you know, they were just in it for them to get married for the sake of getting married versus mm. that. These are two people who truly love each other and accept each other for who they are and they want to spend their lives together because, you know, they have so much love for each other that, you know, it just flows over. So, I mean, women don't, you know, think that, right? They're just like, I just want to get married. So that was another another reason why I created the podcast. I want people to realize, you know, there are women who who marry for love, right? Who find their soulmate for or other half or whoever it is because they've learned to work on themselves fully and learning to accept everything about them, like the good, bad, and the ugly. So, um, and then there's also, you know, successful women who, who are okay with not getting married and learning to find that later on and just focus on what their purpose is and who they are and, you know, work on themselves, right? I mean, you know, I think working on yourself is really important because if you can't learn to love yourself, you won't be able to find that love that you want in other or, you know attract the right things into your life yeah i think there's there's so many different measures of success isn't it and uh, uh and just because the one way doesn't mean that's the measure of success 
So, um, yeah, it's just incredible. But, I, you know, um, I guess the next step is often people say, okay, well, you're married now. When are you having babies? And, you know, it, it's like a never ending story. You never know, right. it's just crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I wanted to find out a little bit more about the, you know, the Chinese descent in the Philippines. And is there like a, a little bit of like in group, out group sort of thing that happens there and uh, from that aspect uh, in the Philippines? Um, I mean, well, there's a huge Chinese population in the Philippines, and you know, um, you know, I guess as Chinese people here, you know, we are viewed a certain way. We're all viewed as, you know, rich and like we all have businesses and we all are do think we all we're all successful. So here, it's like if you see a Chinese person who doesn't do that, it's like they're considered, you know, they're deemed as like low class and. Um, you know, we don't really accept them because they're not mm. from a good family, you know, like, wow. it's like, that's why here it's like getting married is, it's, it's kind of stressful. It's like, you know, you have to marry someone who has a good family background or, you know, who has lots of money and, you know, it's mm. all they're like, who, who is it? What's their last name? What do they do? You know, it, it's crazy. And, wow. and, and then, you know, like I mentioned a lot of people get married for the sake of getting married because of that status, right? It's like, oh, I married this person who owns that thing or mm. who does this thing. And, and sometimes, you know, that's when, when like secrets come out and, you know, we hear mm. things like, oh, they have a second family, they cheat wow. on their wife, they control the finances, you know, then there's like physical abuse, things like that. So, I mean, it's not for every situation, but, you know, it's prevalent, yeah. right? Like, we hear stories like, oh, you know, he he cheated on his wife, you know, multiple times. Oh, he he hits his wife. Oh, you know, I've heard women who tell me, like, I have no control of finances. Like, I have no money unless I have to ask my husband. Oh, you know? wow. Which is, which is sad, right? And, yeah. And women don't talk about this because, you know, they've been... They've been programmed to not say anything and not bring shame to the family name. So, you know, the pressure is huge, right? It's like, you know, we're suffering, but yet we can't say anything because we don't want to shame anybody, right? So we have to, like, sacrifice our own happiness just to make others look good, right? Mm -hmm. But, I mean, if something like domestic abuse is happening, we have to speak up, right? Yeah, because for sure. it's not right. It's, it's, it's like... You know, they're hurting you physically, and it's not just physically, mentally, you're going to catch up. So, um, so yeah, I mean, like, people don't talk about this. And then it's like, in the Philippines, you know, it's a small community. It's like, everyone knows everyone. You know, gossip is huge, right? So it's yes, like, yeah. we hear so much, like, things that happen. We don't know if it's true or not. It's just like, it's, it's insane. <laughs> wow. So how big is the Philippines? What's the population? Oh, I have yeah, I, I I don't even know what the current population is. I mean, like here, I think, you know, we have quite a, a lot of few million people, but it's like, um, you know, there's only a certain amount of like people who have, you know, who are like, it's just like, you know, the one percent group or like the yeah. two group, like everyone else. Right. So. I, I, to be honest, I don't really know the population. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, that's cool. And it's early in the morning. Look, we, we, don't, we don't expect it to <laughs> um, So um, I was just wondering, like, I mean, I was just thinking, though, actually, like uh, how, how sad it is, like in this day and age, like uh, how women are still viewed, you know, and like women's rights is still like archaic, um, mm. you know, like. I was I was reading an, a newspaper or, or just not newspaper just like an article online uh, recently about when women were allowed to start voting right and in some countries like even in the UK it was something like in 1922 was the first time they were allowed to start voting which is ridiculous and in I think it's in Saudi Arabia it's it's like still non-existent or something like that or it only happened in 2011 and it's just like it's so sad how the world is just not moving on. Do you know what I mean? It's like, you know, women really need to be seriously um, part of like this whole sort of, you know, human population. And then it's 
just sad that that it's it's not quite there yet don't you think yeah i mean in asia i mean you know women still like don't have that that um you know advantage to do simple things like in china you know if you're married like you can't even own your own home like you know that the husband has total control mm. over that wow so if ever they were to break up it's like you know she's invested money into this property and mm-hmm. she can't even get it back um so you know because i was just reading it it's like you know what women have to go through you know um, especially in different parts of asia i mean you know arranged marriages still happen you know mm-hmm. um like it it's crazy you know and even as something as sad as like you know children marrying adults you know it's still prevalent in different parts of asia and it's like it's sad and even here in the philippines like women are women and children are forced to do things that they're not proud of because you know they need to put food on the table you know yeah. tourists come here for certain different reasons you know or to ha- you know for for their pleasure and it's like they're hurting these people but they know they can get away with it because you know you 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 they have that money to flaunt it around yeah so it's it's, it's that i mean we're slowly progressing but yeah well, there's more work that needs to be done um you know like human trafficking is huge in the philippines so it's mm. like it's sad like you hear these stories and you know it's happening in your own home it's it's it's, it's crazy yeah yeah and i guess that some of that starts at home as well you know when you've you, I, I would imagine that sometimes if you have a little boy and that little boy is sort of put up on a bit of a pedestal by mom and dad and and then I suppose then you almost get that that perpetuation of of that scenario where where the little boy is maybe a little bit more a little bit more special than the little girl is, and you know there, there, there's a rift starts to form slowly between you know um, girls and boys from a young age, I'd imagine. Yeah, I mean, you know, in most places in Asia, you know, the the males always favored over the female, right? Um, you know, like in China, it's like, even if you have a daughter, like, you know, your male cousin is fav- favorite over you, <laughs> wow. um, because he's male, you know, wow. I mean, cause it's cause he's male. Yeah. He's, he's, he's a man. So like man's always favorite over. Um, so it's, it's crazy. <laughs> yeah, it is. And, and you know what? Wow. I mean, it's so it's, it's once again, it's sad. Like that this, that there's people that have this really warped mindset, right? So I was watching this uh, this show on Netflix uh, last week. There's this guy called Reggie Yates. He's an English guy, and he does these great documentaries that are that are, you know, he, that are really like uh, moving and also quite a little bit controversial, but like uh, all on the good side of controversial. Um, and he he went to go visit this one guy who has supposedly this huge following. Like I don't, I I, I wish I could remember his name, but I can't now. And he basically goes around and he has like millions of people on YouTube that follow him and like subscribe to his Facebook and whatnot. And he basically talks about like how uh, bad it is that women are now uh, getting sort of much more rights. And that means that guys are getting sort of looked over and, you know, they, they're not getting the, the sort of opportunities that they should be getting and like but but he has millions of people that like wow. like him and follow him and i was like are you actually kidding me guys like what century are you living in and Jeez. do you not understand anything about history like you know like <laughs> women maybe only in the last like maximum 100 years have sort of been properly you know recognized and now you guys yes, are just crazy it's just, it's just crazy so there's 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 this like group massive group of people that that sort of still have this mindset which is i mean i can't even fathom it yeah, yeah it's crazy i mean it's, i don't think i'd want to follow that <laughs> yeah yeah it's like a like those gentlemen's little clubs it's just ridiculous like you know yeah. but you know what scares me about that whole idea like you were saying in in some of these asian cultures and stuff and the little boys being put on a pedestal and what have you is Imagine the, the, the opportunity cost or like how many amazing artists and philosophers and uh, scientists and mathematicians and you name it, teachers and whatever, have been 
lost to time because people kind of gave up their own little dreams um, as a as a girl um, to to fit into society. And imagine how much further along uh, nations could have been if, if that wasn't the case. I, I always imagine that must be quite a big number of or, or a big uh, thing, if you know what I mean. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I totally understand. I mean, I remember I recently interviewed a woman who is a dancer. And even, you know, something of like the dance industry is still male dominated, you know? I mean, you think, you know, like dance yeah. is, is female oriented, but it's still dominated by men, by males. So like, wow. so her purpose to, you know, be that representation you know, t for women out there, like you can go out and be a dancer, you know, whether it's ballet or uh, hip hop, whatever it is, because it's still, you know, heavily um, dominated by men. Um, mm -hmm. So it's like it, it was like a wake up, wake up call. Like, you know, we still have so much we can do, um, but that work has to start with us. Right. We have to be that representation or, you know, seek women who have that strong representation. And Yeah, it's going to take a lot of work. But I mean, as long as we all do it together and walk side by side, it can happen. It will happen. Um, and it, it just takes longer than we expected, right? Uh, it, it's mm. sad that you know, it's still a lot of these indus industries are male dominated, but it's, you know, even podcasting, you know, there was hardly any females podcasting, um, let alone Asian females podcasting when it yeah. first started. It was hard to find a female Asian who's a podcaster. I could literally like count it, you know, by, by, by my hands, like, you know, it was probably like five at the time, but now it's slowly, you know, increasing <laughs> because they see other women doing it. They see, you know, that women are out there doing something that they love and using a platform like podcasting to share their voice. And it's, it's great. Right. And, you know, as time goes by, there's going to be more and more coming up because they're not as afraid as they used to because then mm -hmm. they, they see it, right? That's why I think having a strong representation is huge because if they see what's possible for one person, then then they can see it in themselves. You know, I remember someone was asking me, like, why do you only want to, um, you know, interview Asian women? I mean, why not other races? And I had to explain to him because rep representation is huge. Like, you know... A, a little Asian girl can't relate to a, a white person or a black person or a Spanish person. They relate to people who they can associate with, right, to see what's possible. So if, like, if they see, a, you know, an Asian woman who's a dancer, who's a singer, who has a multi-million dollar business, they, like, they can they can see, like, oh, that's possible. I yeah. can actually, yeah. you know, do what she does because I've gone through what they've gone through, right, you know? And, and like, even now, like, you know, in like Hollywood, for example, you know, the representation of, you know, Asian actors is underrepresented, right? Or mm. represent, yeah, <laughs> represent, yeah, under, there's like under yeah. representation, you yeah. know, and it's just, yeah. and now 2018, we have like our first, you know, full Asian casted movie that's about to come out in the summer. And, but that took like 25 years, right? And <laughs> wow. like 18, like, you know, Canada and America is a pretty multicultural country, so we should be yeah. able to, you know, um, have different movies of different cultures because it's, like, very multicultural. 100%. So, so that's why, like, for me, a representation, having that strong representation is huge because then they have options, they have choices, they have decisions instead of thinking, I need to put myself up on the Internet, right, to, you know, sell my body or sell myself or sell my soul to to have that, to live a better life and you don't have to there's choices that you can make to live a better life it's yeah. so true hey? like you, you the representation of i like this the aspect of hollywood is like if you think of like say a chinese representation in hollywood it's almost always like some kind of a martial arts thing or you know there's very much there's typecast or stereotypical representations of of cultures within America on the movies and I hadn't thought of that before but it's so true like just having a bunch of normal people that do normal things that aren't necessarily uh, you know based in some kind of a action film or whatever it is I think it's really powerful to do that because it just sends out a real strong message that we are part of the bigger community and we we've driving this country just as much as anyone else is and I think pop culture is a is a real big 
an important vehicle for for that kind of uh, information. So that's exciting to hear about that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I I was just um, thinking like. What, what what was uh, what what do your brothers and sisters do? Or you, you sorry, you have two sisters, hey? Yeah, I have two sisters. Um, one is baker, and the other one is the uh, food inspector. <laughs> uh, okay, cool. And mm. and so so you guys all went over together, like um, when you were when you were seven, like the whole family, everyone. Yeah, whole family. Yeah. I didn't even know. I'd never even heard of Canada. You know, I thought we were going to America because you know, as a kid, like. You want to go to America because you want to go to Disneyland. And my dad at the time was like, we're going to Canada. And I'm like, what's Canada? <laughs> you want to have Disneyland? And, you know, when you're, when, you're dad, when you're seven and your dad's like, there's no Disneyland, it's like, why are we moving here? No. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. <laughs> never seen TV. <laughs> uh, uh, that's so funny. So, so like, how long did it take you to sort of eventually settle in there? You know, you you said that you had to take English courses, and then, um, you know, I can imagine it it was wasn't the easiest place to probably integrate and and learn like a new sort of culture. And I mean, as I guess as a kid, we we learn faster, right? We learn to adapt faster. So, I mean, I only took ESL classes for the first year um, when I started school there. But I mean, yeah, it's different, right? Especially coming from a country where you look like everyone. You go to a country like Canada and there's different races, different cultures. You know, it's like you're in awe because you never know this existed. Um, so, I mean, yeah, I mean, I guess adjusting took a little bit of, took a little while. And especially like when you don't look the same as everyone else or when you're the new kid, it's, it's still hard to adjust, right? Sometimes you get picked on, you know, they make fun of you because you look different. Right. Yeah. Um, maybe it's because like, your eyes are smaller than everyone else, or something like that. Right. I. Uh, I mean, like you know, when I was a kid in elementary school, yeah, I was picked on, but it wasn't as bad as like how bullying is now nowadays. You know, mm. like with with the internet, like it's it's insane what you know kids have to go through. Mm. Um, yeah. That. Right. Because now it's like they put a video up on Instagram or whatever, and it gets viral. You know, and it really destroys a person yeah i wow. mean if that happened to me at that time i'd probably i probably i don't know what i'd do to be honest i mm. i'd break down for sure and i wouldn't know if i'd be able to move on with life because it can really hurt a person especially if they wow. haven't learned to work on themselves and you know have that thick skin right um this is why i like working in yourself is huge so that you know when you know bad things happen like you can learn to keep pushing through yeah, for sure. Yeah, yes, it must be sure. so tough. We you imagine having to constantly be on guard that someone's going to like, at that age, you're very vulnerable. You know, you say something that's funny to everyone and someone's filmed it. It must be like unbelievably stressful sometimes, you know, that you, you're constantly in a spotlight that can go viral for something. And uh, yeah, it's just something that I guess none of us have really ever had to as a kid anyway had to sort of deal with which is you know as you're older you think your skin gets a bit thicker I guess and you're not as uh yeah but you've Sheena you've had your own fair share of sort of tough times and, and things that have helped you grow and and you know reflect on your own life and uh you know you, you you've been in a coma before and you you mentioned um uh, your auntie uh, passing away take us through some of those tough times that maybe have helped you relativize uh, where you are today and, and maybe even improve your self-confidence? Oh, wow. Um, I mean, I guess there's, you know, sometimes in life, you know, we, like I mentioned, we hit a boiling point, right? We're, we're just like fed up with everything, right? It's like something's got to change, right? I mean, for the longest time, I was just like so critical of myself, so judgmental of myself, I never thought I, I could do anything. I always thought that I was never good at anything. I mean, you know, like at five years old, I failed, kin teacher failed me, you know, in kindergarten for coloring outside the lines. So, you know, you can imagine how that really affected me in the, you know, in the later years because no one realizes like, you know, there's traumas in our lives as young as five or even younger that really trigger who we are today, right? Like for me, I always thought, 
failure was such a bad thing. Like if I failed at something, I just couldn't do it anymore. Mm -hmm. Right. Like I saw failure as like the end of all ends. Right. Like it was the end of the world. I was not good. I can never get back up and just keep going. Right. Cause wow. nobody realizes wow. failure is a good thing. Right. Failure is just feedback. Right. You make mistakes. It's fine. You just do it again and you just keep doing it and doing it over again. Right. And yeah, I mean, even when I used to work a job, it's like making a mistake was the biggest like, sin you ever committed right and it's like you know you do so much wonderful work but then you get judged on that one yeah. mistake you did yeah. right and it hurts because it's like you put your heart and soul into something and then you create one mistake and your boss you know you know screams at you for something for one one mistake right mm -hmm. and it's like you remember that one mistake for the, for the rest of the time that you're working there and that screws is over because it's like oh my god i'm not allowed to make a mistake because then my boss will get mad. Then, you know, I, you know, the company loses money or whatever. And then mm. you see yourself a total failure, right? Even though you have so many accomplishments, like yeah. this one thing, like screws you over. And it's, wow. it's crazy, right? Um, because it's the way we were brought up. It's like, you're not allowed to make a mistake. You know, we're all defined by like numbers and letters and statuses. As, well, as you know, as young as going to school, it's like, if you're an F, you're an idiot, you're a dummy, you're a failure, right? Yeah. And there's so many you know, CEOs out there who flunk school and are, you know, billionaires, right? So mm -hmm. it really just brings, it all comes down to the person of, like, to the person, how much they want it, how much they're willing to go and get it and persevere and keep on going. So, you know, like, um, yeah, we all hit a boiling point, right? We all hit that boiling point and, and you know, something triggers us saying something's got to change and we just have to go out there and start seeking that help, right? Most people are too afraid to seek help, you know? I mean, I started doing things like reading self-help books, um, being nicer to myself, saying saying nicer things to myself because, it's like, you know, nobody ever goes to the mirror and tells themselves they're beautiful or they're worthy or they're enough. It, it's weird. It's not, it's not practice, right? Nobody in school, nobody tells you to say, you know, Start telling yourself I love you. Start telling yourself I can do this, right? At school, it's just like, here's a textbook. Make sure you memorize everything under the sun and, <laughs> and, and, and you know, get an A. If you, if you get an F, you're a failure. You know, you suck. Nothing else will be, but, you know, it's just like, it's so insane. Um, mm. So, you know, yeah, like just learning to work on myself and finding the right help, finding the right um, people that I want to associate with, um, you know, even... Um, you know, trying different things like, you know, maybe working out or some form of meditation um, because, you know, every person's different. So you got to find different ways that works for you. Um, and I'm, I, I'm still, you know, working on it because, you know, confidence is something that we work every work on every day. It's not like a linear line where you're just going to be like confident every single day. There's days where you're not going to be confident. There's days like where it's going to suck a yeah. lot. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like, or it's up and down and I think people have to realize we're going to have bad days we're going to have sucky days but it's our you know confidence you know our ability to get back up when those things happen and to learn that you know there's something that we have to learn from every situation or there's something good that will come out of the situation and when we can see things in a different perspective that's when we can keep going keep moving forward learning to be more confident in our abilities and in ourselves and yeah just I guess being, being more authentic yeah sure. so you you sound like uh really you or you speak like really philosophically and and meaningfully and it's it's really it's really like nice to hear that and and you know you by the sounds of it um your parents were uh really like great parents you know they they brought you up thinking that I think everything was an opportunity and they were very progressive themselves in terms of how they were as parents. Uh, and you've written like some great articles on things that you've learned from your parents who were your role models. So can you just tell us a little bit about them and the sort of influence that they've had on you as a person and in your life? I mean, you know, my parents, um, wow. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're they were great. I mean, you know, they've taught us certain things that shape who we are today, you know, learning to be kind to others, you know, making sure to be, to be able to, um, you know, go out there and get, go after what we want. I mean, you know, not 
not all parents are perfect, right? They had certain expectations as well. But in the end, you know, I, the one of the biggest lessons I learned from my parents was that no matter what happens, they will love you unconditionally. Because I always felt like I had to be someone or do something to make them proud of me. Um, but the only person I had to be was just be myself. And they would always love me who, for who I was, even if some of the things I did no, did not make sense to them because, you know, they were brought up by Asian parents and their way of life was to go get a good education, get a good job and just work till you're like 60. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so for me to, to quit my job, it was, it was hard for them because they didn't understand it. Right. They couldn't understand it because success to them was, you know, having that house, having the car, having a good job, but you know, it's, it wasn't for, for me. And, you know, it took time for them to realize like, you know, yeah, that's, you know, she wants to do something else. And, you know, just knowing that they have my back is, is all I needed, right? I always mm-hmm. thought if I did something outside of what was told, you know, outside of the one way that they would not accept me, they would not love me. But, but you know, um, you know, when I was just honest about them as to, like, what I was doing or, you know, what I really wanted, they just, they, they understood. They were just like, you know, whatever makes you happy, right? And I think it's, it's rare, rare when... Um, you know, parents tell you do what makes you happy, right? Because it's always like, no, you, you have to go to school, you have to get a job, you have to do this, right? And when you are forced to do something, it never works out, right? Yeah. I don't know if that happens to you. Like when you try to force something to make it work, it just doesn't work because <laughs> it's it's not natural for you, right? Like you're forcing something that you know is not going to work in your heart. You know, you wake up with this heaviness every single day, and it's just, you know it's not for you, so. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, like, you know, we had our ups and downs, but in the end, you know, it's because they have that unconditional love, like it, it, it makes it, you know, it makes things a lot better, a lot lighter. And it's like, I'm not afraid to be more open about the things I did or I'm, you know, if, if, if I'm not doing anything, you know, I'm just more honest. It's like, you know, at the moment I'm just taking a break. And, you know, that was like a weight lifted off of me because I always had to, I always felt like I had to be somebody or do something great or, you know, be this person, right? Especially when you live in a world where they're like, oh, so-and-so is this now and so-and-so got this job and so-and-so is making this much income. It's like, you know, there was a moment in time where it's like, I'm none of those things, right? So maybe I'm not good enough for my parents. Um, But that didn't matter to them. You know, I'm their child. They love me from who I am and they will keep on loving me no matter what happens, even through the toughest times of my life, right? And... And it, I'm grateful for that. I'm grateful that they have that unconditional love um, because now I can see what unconditional love looks like because it's not mm. always like they love you for the good parts. They love you for the good, bad, and the ugly parts, right? <laughs> so. <laughs> and so, so, so she know, what do they think about you helping thousands and thousands of other women uh, and being a massive influence on and a positive influence on many people's lives. Like, first of all, do they like listen to the podcast? Do they know what podcasting is all about and what a massive impact you're having on people? Um, I don't know if they've ever heard my podcast, <laughs> but I mean, it's online, like what I've done. And, and I guess, you know, for them, it's like, you know, it, I had to sh- sometimes I have to explain to them. It's like, you know, there's a bigger picture, right? It's not always about, you know, if, if you made money that day or whatever, right. It's like, mm. it's the pur- having that bigger purpose, right. It's yeah. like, there's more to it than that, right. There's women out there who are, you know, actually, um, taking action on their own lives because they've listened to the podcast. So, cool, um, yeah. so, so, so things like that, um, you know, when I explain to them, they understand like, okay, well, you know, that's good, you know, and keep doing it. Right. Um, because it is, you know, creating a positive impact on the world and, you know, I've always wanted to help people. I just never knew how until, yeah. you know, podcasting, like, fell onto my lap. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I was just wondering, I know we've, like, we've touched on the podcast and about sort of, like, how you, you know, you s- s- got into it. But but can you just take us back, like, a, you know, maybe to when you were working in, in your job before podcasting and then, you know, what the turn of events was that got you – to go right okay life is short uh we've i've just got to go and i've got to live it on my my terms and then and then just 
like work that into you know how you started your podcast um so i mean like i mentioned when my aunt passed away you know that was one defining moment that made me realize how short life was and that you know we have to live that quality that we want you know there's so many people out there who are like zombies you know they just wake up go to work and it's like I was like that. It's like sometimes I'd drive to work and I'd be like, how did I get here so fast? Like, I don't even remember taking the because we're so accustomed to it, right? Yeah. Um, I mean, it it did take me a while. It's just like certain things start falling into place, you know, I guess just the right timing. Um, like, you know, the, my mortgage was coming up for renewal and like, I just decided I'm just going to sell my stuff. You know, I was just like, <laughs> It was a sign for me to just sell all my stuff and just start living the life that I want. So I did that, right? And it's not typical for people to do that. You know, yeah. your family, friends are like, what are you doing? Have you gone nuts? Are you going crazy? <laughs> you know, there was a time in my life where I said I wanted to live in Hawaii and everyone thought I was nuts. But um, I made it happen, you know, which was like oh, something nice. I never thought would be possible. I um, lived there for two winters, which was great. <laughs> and, you know, I just... I don't know, I guess when I started the podcast, you know, for me, it was just like, I never saw women being celebrated for their achievements, right? You go to these like marketing, you know, I used to go to these marketing events and it's like, no offense, all I saw was like white guys on stage, like teaching women how to be successful. And it's like, yeah. it's great. But at the same time, it's like these women can't relate to men. We don't think the same way as men do, right? We're women. We are more emotional. We're more analytical. We we, you know, overanalyze everything. So we need to learn from, we need to see, you know, women who have the success and how they were able to do it and what they were, they had to deal with. So that's, that's how the podcast came up. You know, I was just so sick and tired of just seeing men on stage all the time. And I wanted, you know, better representation. And that's when I started the podcast, you know, and at the time I didn't even know what a podcast was. I just said, maybe I'll start a blog. But I was just like, you know, everyone has a blog. It's like, it has to be something. <laughs> that people can get their hands on, you know, cause it's like, you can't read a blog while you're jogging or, you know, when you're yeah. driving, like something that's more convenient, more accessible. And mm. um, that's when podcast casting fell into place. I mean, I didn't even know what a podcast was before I invested in courses that helped me do that. And um, so, yeah. And then even when I started my podcast, it was still scary for me because I was still, you know, not confident in myself. You know, it's funny. I have a, podcast about confidence and I was confident. <laughs> um, I was afraid people might think I'm nuts. Maybe my voice sounds funny. Oh, uh, yeah. People listen to it. Like all these thoughts in my head, right? Yeah. Maybe I'm not as good as other podcasters. You know, I was yeah. comparing myself to someone who's been doing it for like 10 years versus me just starting out. And we're all good at that, right? We're all good at the comparing game. Um, so it took me a while to actually even launch my podcast which is why having like you know a good group of people to push you is, is huge because when you're not feeling 100 percent confident there's someone to keep pushing and say keep going keep going because you know you have something good out there to 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 share with the world um so you know even like i had a, a mentor was like you know just put it out there if it's not success you just create another one so i was like all right <laughs> i'll just release it. yeah um but then it, it turned out to, you know, the, the results were better than I expected, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, amazing. You've done amazingly well. Isn't it amazing how you, through the process of something, you you grow so much uh, yourself? And uh, and I, I guess Gareth and I have seen that as well. Like, you know, you just learn as you go and, and starting is the, is the biggest thing. And having people around you that support you is obviously, like, vital. But... Uh, who, who are you chatting to on your podcast? What are the kind of people that you chat to? And uh, tell us a little bit about the, the format uh, of your podcast. Um, so, I mean, right now I do um, interview women of Asian descent. Like I mentioned, I wanted it to be a support system for Asian women, especially when it comes to confidence. And, you know, it's you know Asian women from different walks of life, different backgrounds, different careers, um, you know, what they've struggled through and how they're able to overcome it, to live the life that I want. I mean, uh, they want, sorry. Um, you know, I, <laughs> whose career, like who has careers that you never thought would be possible. It's like, you know, I interviewed a woman who's just a Christmas song artist. Right. And uh -huh. I mean, like 
you know, how many women are just sing Christmas songs and write Christmas songs, right? Or, um, you know, I met, I interviewed a woman who's a fitness trainer for no, rom, romance novel or authors, right? Wow. And it's like so specific, right? You're like, <laughs> really? you can create something out of that? And you can because she made wow. it happen because she used to be an author and she was like, yeah, because as an author, you don't have time to work out. So, you know, I wow. wanted to be that coach for them to, set aside some time to work out or, you know, whatever it is, be that accountability partner. Um, I've interviewed sure. a woman who was born with no arms, but is the first armless pilot. You know, she does everything with wow. her feet. She wow. coasts, Goodness. she drives, everything. She flies a plane with her wow. feet. What? Wow, it's amazing. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, like, uh, it's, it, it amazes me what women can do and their ability to do things and like you met, you know, one of the biggest lessons I learned from them was that we don't know, like, we may have that, like, you know, when you start something, we have no clue how we're going to do it. But we have, you know, the ability to figure it out along the way. We're going to make mistakes. We're going to screw up. There's going to be bad days. Like, even with podcasting, there's days when I th want to throw my computer against the wall, but we just <laughs> keep going. So, yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm just grateful for all the women who've been able to share their story, you know, because some of them, you know, have told me they've never shared it until they went on the podcast, you know, which was, you know, which was really great because like, wow, you know, how, what made them decide to share it today versus like, you know, from other platforms, right? I mean, there's women who've been through abuse, been through bankruptcy, who've been through like, you know, the toughest, toughest, toughest times of their lives that have been able to overcome it. And, you know, they can do things like be a Christmas song artist, you know, be, be able to fly a plane with your feet, um, yeah. be able to come out of, you know, um, be able to get out of that relationship that wasn't meant for them, you know, mm. so, and or create that business that I've always wanted. Um, it's, it's amazing. Uh, yeah. You know, it's like when I hear these stories, I get it inspired <laughs> yeah i can imagine so like sure i'm, I'm sure you know you, i'm sure you document things that you learn from them like what are the the biggest things that you've learned from your guests um so some of the things i've learned was just like learning to love yourself unconditionally right like learning to love the good and the bad parts you know learning to realize failure is okay making mistakes is okay um you know some people don't realize like some of your greatest mistakes that could actually lead you to your greatest opportunities, right? Yeah. Um, to figure things out along the way, you know, having a huge purpose. I think having a, a purpose is bigger than yourself really helps you with your confidence because you're doing something that's for the greater good, that's something beyond you, you know? Mm -hmm. um, most of these women, you know, they do things because it's, 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 you know, it's a bigger purpose for them. Like it's more than just them, whether it's, you know, just being a better mom to your kids or, uh, you know, helping, helping, you know, uh, women who want to be dancers or be able to educate people on a certain topic. Like they all have a huge purpose and that that's really huge. Right. Um, because like I mentioned, you're doing something, you know, that's that that everyone can fit into. Right. They can all fit into and realize I can be a part of this movement. And I like it, and I want to be able to do that as well. That's so cool. Is your is your listenership um, obviously predominantly Asian females? But do you also have like a fair amount of other ladies listening in from around the world? And um, <laughs> what is the sort of feedback that you get? I mean, it's it's amazing that you know I get male and female listeners. Um, I mean. Some of them have told me they've listened to the podcast for over a year and Ooh. they're like a big fan. And I'm just like, oh, wow. <laughs> you know, because I'm <laughs> like, I didn't know, right? You never know who's listening. Um, I see. And me. even like looking through stats, like I never would have imagined that like Japan would be like the second most, like my second biggest audience, right? Oh, wow. Because it's uh, like, uh, I'm not uh, even Japanese. Like, I don't even know what I'm doing <laughs> that can attract that. <laughs> So, so it's, 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 it's crazy. Like it, it's, it's a pleasant surprise, you know? Um, you know, I get a lot of guys who actually want to be on the show. So I actually have to turn them down because I you know, have to tell 
Sorry, guys, for women. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's so funny. Yeah. So, so, how like how do you go about finding five? Because I mean, you've had five hundred shows, so it can't be a easy feat finding five hundred um, Asian women oh. like that are so even willing to talk and that are you know, yeah, yeah want to come I mean, on the show. It must it must have been very difficult. Yeah, at first, you know, when you're first trying to get guests, it's 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 scary because you don't know what the outcome is. You're too you're you're scared to like even reach out to somebody and ask them like, hey, is it okay if you want to share your story on the podcast? Um, I've had people who told me no. I have people who wanted to be offered money for it. It's like <laughs> this isn't you know I don't do that. Sorry. Um, you know, then scheduling, you know, different women from different time zones, you know, mm. it's, yeah, it, it is a lot of work, but you know, at the end when you, um, hear listeners or when you get messages from listeners, like, you know, it's all worth it. Or even women who have interviewed, who've gone through great lengths to be on, on the show. Right. Um, I have women who approach me saying, asking if they can be on the show. And, you know, the stories that they had to go through, like, just to, to share their story also, like, makes me realize, okay, that I'm doing something right, you know, I'm helping someone out there learn to be more confident in themselves and share their stories because not a lot of women are, are you know, confident enough to share their stories out there. They think they don't have a story. Yeah. But everyone has a story. So, yeah. They yeah. Do. Yeah, there's days where I want to throw my laptop against the wall, but, you know, I always look at the bigger picture, like, you know, there, this is helping people out there because yeah there's days where i wanted to quit i mean <laughs> you know there's sure. days where it's super frustrating but like that's why having a big purpose is huge because you know where you're going and you just keep going even when there's tough days yeah it's so cool that people want to like cool. are curious about other people's stories and are, and want to know and and i love that what you said you know we we've all got a story everyone has a story and if you just take the time to to listen and uh, chat to someone like that, it's you know we can always learn something from someone else, and uh, I think that's yeah such a cool message. And who are the people at the moment that you sort of turn to, like as a mentor or something like that, that give you that besides your parents, let's say, or maybe it is your parents uh, that give you that 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 support and actual like advice on on maybe specifically the podcast and that kind of thing. Well, so I have a group of friends that I go to, kind of like accountability partners. Um, you know, we talk to each other about business and personal things. And, you know, if I have a problem, I can turn to them. If I need advice, I can turn to them and they do the same thing. So it's like a back and forth thing. Um, and that's who I, I really turn to, people who I can trust, who I can feel like I can resonate with them and be able to just, you know, really express some of the things that I want to do or not want to do. And they can they can tell me what I need to hear versus what I want to hear. And I think that's yeah. super because <laughs> like, you know, you may think you're doing something great, but they can tell you it's a terrible idea and it might not work out and you have to be ready to say, okay, maybe you're right. You know, yeah. because sometimes our ego is in the way and we're like, I don't know what you're talking about. This is the greatest idea ever. <laughs> <laughs> really. <laughs> so it's really important to have people who tell you what you need to hear versus what you want to hear. Yeah, sure. Yeah, that's so right. And, and I can imagine that you are now seen as like quite a leader for women. And, you know, how does that make you feel? I don't know. I don't really, I don't know if I can really see myself as a leader. I think it's just more like trying my best to lead by example, just learning to be more authentic and be myself um, and learn to walk side by side with people versus, you know, being in front or being behind, um, to me, it's just like really helping people, right? Just helping people just be better, better version of themselves. Um, you know, and when we can see, see that, see it in that way, like, um, I guess I just, it just helps me keep, keep on going, like keep, you know, doing whatever it is I have to do to help people out there. Yeah. I mean, you, you, you can easily argue that, purely by helping people and doing what you're doing is definitely a form of leadership. And I'm sure a lot mm. of your listeners do look up to you and they're like, wow, you know, this lady really gives us inspiration 
and mm. makes us want to go and do things we want to do and live the life we want to live. We want to live. So I would definitely see it as as a form of leadership. What what sort of um, what sort of like opportunities has it kind of opened up for you? Because I know you now like now do uh, public speaking and and you know you obviously do blogging and stuff too. So what other things is are going on in your life? Um. So right now, really, I've been approached a lot to be interviewed more on on podcasts, which is new for me this year because I'm so used to asking questions to people. <laughs> so. Mm ask me questions at first it was really weird <laughs> you know it's like <laughs> nobody wants to interview me who wants who wants to hear my story like no one <laughs> listen to me and even just you know just talking about stuff it's like do i make sense are people going to think i don't make sense you know all these things <laughs> right? um but yeah it's just really um open up a lot of more of me i guess sharing my story and promoting podcasts um, you know, people have, you know, approached me to write articles for them, like for Mind Valley, which I thought was really great because I didn't even, you know, it, it just, I never even knew who they were at the time. And it was like, wow, you know, I didn't know like this, this, this company wants me to, you know, share my thoughts and views on confidence. So, you know, things like that and just, you know, meeting new people, you know, talking to new people. Um, it, it's been great, especially, you know, I guess after 500 women, it's like, you know, that's a lot of connections to, yeah, yeah. to have. It's great. And, and so, yeah, and just learning, it's helped me in my own confidence as well, just learning to learning more about myself and what I'm capable of. Yeah. I, yeah. I guess it must be so nice for you as well to, like you say, have that network. And if you travel somewhere, you can go and like knock on some one of their doors and go, hey, you know, I'm come from us or hook it up and and you know you've got that network it's always there when you need it as well like that real extended network which is a cool little um you know side effect of what you're doing which is which is awesome so what is what is your um what does living life on your terms mean for you well for me it's just doing what you want to do right living that what like you know creating a life by your design you know um whether it's you want to be a dancer you want to travel the world you know, whatever it is, it's, it's what you love, what you're doing, what makes you happy, what you're passionate about. Right. Um, you know, most people think success is just how much money you have in the bank. Right. And like, you know, having, having money is great, but it's like, there's a lot of people who have money and are still unhappy. Right. There's a lot of people who live with less, but are actually a lot happier. Right. It's learning to be happy at your present moment, no matter what happens. Um, because like, we just feel like, oh, one day when I'm this, then I'll be happy. It's like, no, mm. be happy for today. Be grateful for today. Be grateful for everything that you've been blessed with. Right. Especially when you live in a country like the Philippines, you know, having three meals is a luxury. Yeah, well, <laughs> you know, yeah. most can't have three meals. Some of them have to, you know, go through the garbages and find food if they're lucky. So, so, you know, when we see things in that, in that perspective we are a lot wealthier than we realize and yeah. just learning to be grateful in that and the more we're grateful the better the more things can come to us and i mean you know it's not always easy but i always believe it's worth it for yeah, sure it is so you 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 mentioned that uh you've been living sort of a couple of the winter uh, seasons in hawaii uh that must be pretty cool eh? like ticking that off your your dream list yeah, I mean, I never would have, in a million years, I never would have thought I could do that. Um, so when I was there, it was like, wow, I, I sometimes I just couldn't believe it. Like, I had to, like, pinch myself because, like, I can't believe I did this, right? And, you know, it was funny because, like, everything just fell into place. It was just like one day I said, you know, I want to live somewhere outside of Canada. And I don't know, for some reason, Hawaii just popped up. I didn't even know why. Like, you know, I, like one of the biggest lessons I learned as well is just like sometimes we do things that don't make sense and we have no reason why we do them but it you know makes later makes sense later on in life right we don't have to explain every single thing we do we don't have to like wonder why we do the things we do sometimes it's just like that intuition we just go for it right because there's something there and you never know what might happen um you know we just feel like 
just because, you know, we do things a certain way that may not look like what we pictured it doesn't mean it's going to like go bad. Right. It's just like, it just doesn't, it's just not how it's supposed to look, but you know, like, you know, everything falls into place. That's so cool. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Every, every event in our life, you know, leads us closer to where we are now, whether you know it or not. And, and it, like, I really like that actually, the, the idea of um, not having to explain it. Sometimes that's just what you feel you've got to do and, uh, and, uh, and, and just go with it. And knowing that your journey has taken you to that point to make that decision, you know, your whole life. So it's just a really cool idea that. So where is your journey taking you to the future? What is your, what are some of your plans? To be honest, I haven't really thought that far. <laughs> you know, I'm taking it one day at a time. You know, I still work on myself constantly because new challenges come up, new fears come up. So I have to learn to work with them and be able to tell myself, you know, don't worry, just go for it. You know, like, it's funny, you know, most people think if you have a podcast about confidence, you're like this super confident person. Mm -hmm. And there's days where I'm totally not confident. There's days where I just want to hide from the world. And like binge on Netflix the whole day. You know, there's days where I'm even too scared to make that leap, right? But it's learning to be to be able to share something like this with with people still makes you confident because it's not easy to share what you're afraid of or what you're going through mm. or even mm. being honest, being authentic. Like, you know, I'm not always confident. People might think I'm super confident, but there's days where I'm totally not confident, <laughs> and that's okay. It's okay because we're human. We're not robots. We're not like these robots that we have to be super confident every single day, right? Um, it's okay to have those bad days. It's okay to feel like you're not 100% confident. You know, it's okay to have these doubts, right? Mm. Um, it's just learning to work through them and keep pushing. And that's why working on yourself every day is huge. Yeah, I, I, so, I so agree with that. And I love the way, like what you're saying, because what you're saying, basically everyone is thinking, right? You know, um, mm. everyone does basically struggle with these things. You know, no one is like the most confident person all the time. Even if you are confident, you do still have your down moments. Um, but it's, it's a lot of people are too scared to, to talk about it. So how you're talking now is just so refreshing. I just love it. You know, mm -hmm. that you, that to me, that shows that you're confident. If you can talk about that you're not confident, like I, I almost think, wow, you're confident, you know? So it's, <laughs> um, it, it's a kind of like a, a strange way of looking at it, I guess. <laughs> but um, how does it make you feel talking now to people like on podcasts about your story? Like, what does it feel like for you? You know, is it bringing out anything that you might not have thought before? Or what, what's the reflection been like for you? Um, you know, I guess, you know, sometimes it's funny when you can surprise yourself with what you're capable of, right? I mean, when I, when I get interviewed, they're all just like, wow, you have so much to say. And I'm like, really? <laughs> you know, because you're not used to it, right? It's like, you know, I just talk about my experiences and what I've learned and hopefully be able to pass that information and help to help other people. Um, so I guess it's just, I have more confidence in myself to just share information, right? Um, you know, most people think you have to be a certain person or talk a certain way to be more confident, but it's just really learning to be yourself, learning to share what you have to learn, learning to share who you are, you know, the good stuff and the bad stuff. Um, that's actually helped me become, you know, I guess a little bit more confident because I'm not afraid to be who I am. I'm not afraid to um hide you know i'm not hiding anything yeah. right um, yeah. so it's like yeah i've been through bad things in life i've been through like crazy stuff and yet i'm still here standing i'm still here talking so mm -hmm. for sure <laughs> yeah that's so cool so like i i know this is a bit of a loaded question and and maybe from a bit of left field but what what is one thing I guess in the world that you would want to change now, that is probably a well it doesn't have to be a big issue but just one thing in the world that you think would be good to change now. One thing in the world. Yeah. I guess to end like human trafficking. <laughs> yeah. I that to me you know just you know when I hear stories especially here in the Philippines it's heartbreaking you know and 
you know, sometimes you're at the mall and you see tourists who, you know, walk around with local kids and it's like, wow. you know, sometimes it's the worst because it's prevalent here, right? Wow. And it's like, you see that and it, it hurts, <laughs> you know? It's Jeez. like that kid is only 10 or 11 years old and you don't know what they're going through at the moment. Oh, then you see, where, you know, people who are tourists here get arrested because they pimp out, you know, little girls as young as six years old and it just breaks your heart. Um, so that's one Jeez. thing I think, and, you know, it's still really prevalent kids and women are, you know, heavily affected by this and, you know, we need to end it. I don't know, in some way, shape or form. <laughs> wow. Yeah. yeah. Wow. That's, uh, that's ter terrible. I mean, you know, I guess in, in some small way, what you're doing is, is, is can help that kind of stuff on a, on a grander scale because you you know, people's confidence, you, t you know, equal rights and these kind of things. So, you know, in your own not so small way, you, you really, um, I think getting those that kind of message out there and, and making it aware for people. Like I, I had no idea, for example, that, that it was so prevalent, like, you know, and, uh, so, you know, the, if you want to change things, you, you have to start by discussing them and, and that's what you're doing. So, you know, well done for that, you know, geez. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, for our, you know, for our guests, what's the best way for them to get in touch with you? And uh, I guess, no, before that, like uh, you, I know you just finished your 500th episode and I think on, I was listening to it and you said you're going to start up again in September. Is, is that the plan? You're going to start like a series four of the podcast? Yeah. Yeah. Season four, yeah. Uh, that's, so. So I take season breaks to keep my sanity. Yeah, <laughs> you know, good. doing five, five shows a week can be, um, it's a lot of work, but it's, I mean, it's, I like it, you know, it's, I really enjoy it. I really love listening to women's interviews and getting to know them and getting to know their stories. Um, but yeah, I mean, right now it's just a little bit of a break. I can spend more time with my family, especially my grandma's before, you know, I start doing things again. And uh, people can, you know, reach me. Um, I'm not a really, I'm, I'm not a hard person to find on the internet. <laughs> they just Google Sheena Yapchan. I'm like the only Sheena Yapchan on the internet, which is pretty good. <laughs> um, have. And then, you know, with podcasts, they can check out. Um, it's called the the Tao of Self Confidence, and it's on Apple iTunes, on Spotify, and Stitcher. Um, we have a website. It's uh, the Tao of Self Confidence dot com where they can um, check past episodes, check tools and resources for their own journey of self-confidence. You know, I do little simple things like um, a free self-talk tape where, you know, it's just um, me saying, you know, positive things that they can listen to because what we say to ourselves is is really huge, mm. right? And if we see ourselves in a more negative way, then, you know, we're attracting the wrong things. But when you can start listening to more positive things you say to yourself, it really does... Um, change the way we see ourselves because like nobody realizes our brain is like a, a a piece of hardware on a computer right if you feed it good stuff it works well but if you feed it with viruses your computer goes a wall right yeah. it's not working <laughs> you know um so it's really important what we feed ourselves you know what we say to ourselves um you know mentally it's it's huge right that's one of the biggest things that will also help our confidence so yeah <laughs> yeah that's really cool yeah. Um, so I just wanted to, you know, just first of all, just to say thanks so much for coming on the podcast. Uh, I, I have to apologize because I honestly thought when we were talking on email that, uh, and you said, oh, that's three o'clock my time. Hey, I'm like, yeah, of course. And I was definitely thought you were in Canada, but you, you were in Philippines. So you must have been like, geez, this guy's demanding. He's asking me to come on at three <laughs> in the morning. So I'm so sorry. Yeah, I, the wires were completely crossed there. So thank you for oh, no. <laughs> thank you for waking up so early and, uh, and joining was, us. <laughs> I was listening with my bed head and, you know, nothing on my face, you know. It's just no. like... No, you look you look delightful. Trust me. I mean, I'm much better than I ever look at five a.m. in the morning. So, so yeah, yeah, it's it's just been so nice um, of you to share your story with us, and it's quite hard to believe, like you know, that you you might struggle with self confidence because you don't come across that way at all. And um, I think you have such That's a right. great message 
um, to share. You have a lot of knowledge. You come across really wise. And I, I can feel like that I could listen to you talk like on stage, you know, and I go, wow, this girl really has gone through, you know, a lot and has a lot of great things to share. Um, and I'm sure lots of people that, that listen to you feel the same way. Um, and for what you're doing, it's really amazing. You know, like you're, you're speaking to, you're speaking to people, you're hearing their stories, you're sharing their trials and tribulations, and you're inspiring other people as part of that. And the world needs more of that. You know, the world needs more people like yourself that are willing to sort of put their neck out to share people's stories and to create positivity. And that is really cool and really touching. So it resonates really well with us as, uh, you know, uh, podcasters who, who, you know, well, obviously the name is Ridiculously Human and uh, that's the mo one of the most ridiculously human things, you know, is sharing great stories. And um, so, yeah, just thank you so much. And uh, it's been really, really inspiring listening to you talk. And uh, we wish you all the best for the future. And we hope that you have an awesome break in the Philippines and you get to spend some good time with your granny there and, and your friends and whoever else. And yeah, it's just been a real pleasure to chat to you. Oh, no, it's been a pleasure to um, be on the show. So thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. <laughs> no and just real briefly, Sheena, like, uh, you know, Gareth said it pretty well, but I just love the, the, the concepts that you are spreading, you know, good self-talk um confidence um you know women's rights and you know living a dream living the life that you want on your terms i just think it's such awesome message and more people certainly like i said do need to hear this and blokes too and <laughs> not just the, not just the ladies are so really exciting and and we really enjoyed listening to you you do speak really well and you do come across as that confident um, empowered uh, woman and uh, so we're grateful to have had a chat with you uh, I think your parents must be super proud because even though you know you don't you haven't got the nine to five as they might have initially thought you know you're chatting to two South African blokes now randomly across <laughs> the world and and you know and you're influencing people literally around the world and i think that is something super special so uh keep up the good work and uh thanks again for your time today oh thank you like again like i mentioned it was really great being here and being able to just share my stories and insights um to your listeners yeah that's so cool thank Beautiful. you Sheena. thank you cheers <laughs> thank you.